Welcome back to Mass Effect 3 everyone. So we are continuing doing a bit of side questing out in the galaxy before we trigger a priority mission or start a priority mission yeah, because I'd just like to get the blue suns on board. I'm not sure if we whatever the guy needs and uh, we might already have it I'm not sure but uh, what we're gonna do at the start of this episode is we're gonna explore this this star cluster because it's got a lot of star systems in it in it so we're gonna go I think we've been to the all these systems before I remember this this and that oh god we're low on fuel so we're gonna need to find some fuel at some point uh, but we're in the Plutus system Mingito Maidla Okay, these don't ring a bell with my limited brain power. Bayaria. So, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do more planet description reading uh, before we attempt to get the blue suns on board. And then I, I don't think there's anything else we really need to do before going to the next priority mission. So, Bayaria uh, is a huge hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of methane in its atmosphere. Yes. Maidla is a terrestrial planet with a light atmosphere of carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. The surface is hot and mainly composed of magnesia with deposits of sulfur. Over a dozen volcanoes are currently erupting across its surface. Very hot then. Clacrolis. Clacrolis is a modest rock planet roughly the size of Mars. It has a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and ethane. Its scorching hot surface is mainly composed of silicate rock with deposits of aluminum and other light metals. Clacrolis has a very weak magnetic field in addition to very high levels of solar radiation. It's not suitable for mass effect drive discharge operations. Non-UL Though it is one of the oldest entries in the star charts, Non-UL has not yet been fully mapped. It's the largest body in the asteroid belt of the blue star Plutus. Not only large enough to maintain a spherical shape, but also massive enough to, re to retain the noxious carbon and sulfur dioxide venting from its many volcanoes as an atmosphere. Nonuel is ra rapidly volcanic, and the source of its great heat is also the source of its inordinate mass. Nonuel is the secondary source of, ele of element zero, coalesced around a large chunk of ESO ejected by a supernova billions of years ago. Surface conditions are extremely hazardous, in addition to the thin crust and numerous magma flows, wide stretches of the landscape are coated with slippery ash and cinders ejected from the volcanoes. I was thinking, because um, I was just thinking about Outer Wilds for a second then, um, the, uh, the Reapers must be protecting the galaxy or they think that they're protecting the galaxy from organics because if it was just purely about death and destruction they'd do extreme things like blowing up star like triggering stars to supernova and you know like the Kro krogans were doing like throwing asteroids or crashing planets into each other or something like extreme right because they, they clearly have they would probably have the power to do things like that um so I think the fact that they are kind of systematically wiping people out on like a city and surface level means I think that they're trying to protect the the galaxy in a way from the consumerism of organic life forms, right? Okay, Mingi Mingito is a sun-baked wasteland of sodium, chlorates and radioactives. Its relatively light mass has left it tidally, it tidally locked to the star Plutus, with a dayside hot pole and a nightside cold pole. The powerful solar wind has stripped most of the atmosphere away. Yeah, but unfortunately they've animated it as rotating, so... <laughs> okay, let's do some scanning. Oh no. Get ready to run. Signal confirmed. Whoa. What have we got? Special Ops, Team Zeta. 
Oh, right, 103rd Marine Division. Nice. That's all the assets here, so. Haha, <laughs> see you later, Reapers. Reapers eluded. Uh, but. <laughs> we're kind of low on fuel. Let's hope this system. It's got some fuel because I think we're going to run out. Okay, it's a big old system, so hopefully. Near him. I think this is probably from the first game, which is why I can't remember. Nirim is a terrestrial world with a thin atmosphere of methane and argon. Its frozen surface is mainly composed of basaltic rock. Its most prominent feature is the Elos Rift Valley, a long volcanic divergence zone that stretches across half the northern hemisphere. We've got a teeny planet. Jartar. Jartar is a terrestrial world with a trace atmosphere of krypton and xenon. The surface is hot and primarily composed of unremarkable silicates. Occasional deposits of aluminum, magnesium and other light metals can be found. Jartar is noted for the discovery of the, Levi of the Leviathan of Dis. Okay, this is ringing a bell. The apparent corpse of a genetically engineered living starship. The Leviathan was found in the bottom of a crater by a Batarian survey team and estimated to be nearly a billion years old. It disappeared after a visit to the system by a Batarian dreadnought 20 years ago. Yeah, this was something I remember reading, the Leviathan of Dis, yeah. Yeah. A living starship. How that is just awesome, isn't it? A billion years old. Wow. Since then, the Batarians have steadfastly denied that the Leviathan existed at all. All, all the more vociferously when shown recordings of the corpse made by Solarian researchers. Yeah, that's a shame that the Batarians got hold of it. It might have been useful if someone else would have got it, right? You know, the, the, the Batarians are alright, but they're... What's that beep for? I found something. Ah, it does beep when we just roll over them as well. Excellent. Some fuel. Only 50% though. Yeah, I, I, I apologise if I'm rereading planets, but... That I've maybe read in the first game, particularly on this side of the galaxy, because this is probably from the first game, because we're in Count uh, Citadel space, but... Um, you know, I'll treat this game as its own entity, so it's nice to have these things reread, at least for my sake anyway. Uh, Grimar is an icy terrestrial with a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and krypton. Its surface is mainly composed of frozen ammonia with deposits of tin and other light metals. When exposed to sunlight, Grimar's ammonia can melt, forming equatorial seas of the toxic chemical. This has allowed a profusion of simple fungus and lichens to evolve in the low energy environment. A byproduct of their metabolism causes them to glow very faintly. While the light of an individual is insignificant, large patches seem to reinforce the light of one another and are visible from space. Yeah, let's read the others before we trigger the Reapers. Clensal. Clensal has a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and ethane. Its first geological surveys were performed by Batarians and suggested areas of great mineral wealth. Human mining concerns spent billions of credits hustling to the distant systems and sinking test bores to claim the system for humanity. But Clensal had only an average level of mineral wealth, valuable but hardly worth the Russian expense. Merida Industria, a small Mexican company hoping to strike it rich in their first extrasolar mining venture, had to file for bankruptcy protection. Investigation revealed the Batarian crew had deliberately falsified their results, hoping it would encourage human rivals to invest in a costly boondoggle. Yeah, I remember talking about boondoggles as well. While unethical, this was not technically illegal, and the Batarian government disavowed the personal actions of a few misguided patriots. The planet still littered with abandoned mining bases, which are often used as temporary meeting places for criminals. Ratia. Ratia is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of sodium and ammonia in its atmosphere. During the brief gold rush to Clensol, a few companies established an infrastructural infrastructural for 
helium-3 skimming and deuterium mining on Raish's icy moons. When Clensal proved to be less wealthy than expected, the facilities were stripped for parts and abandoned. <laughs> Had to be done. I believe in Joker's flying capabilities. Okay. Uh, quick! Faster than light jump successful. Okay, we might not make this. Yeah, we will. Just. Oof. Okay, just two planets here. Farinata. Oh no, three, three planets, sorry. Nephew. Yeah, some of these are ringing a bell the names now. With a rare combination of features, Nepnu is of particular interest to the scientific community. Nepnu is a small terrestrial planet with a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and krypton. As with all the worlds of Farinata, its surface is scorching hot. Crust mainly consists of silicates laced with iron. Chill out, chill out. Juntalma. Yeah, I remember, I'm remembering the names now. Juntama is a small, broiling terrestrial world. Its thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and ethane is being steadily blown off by the powerful solar wind from the star Farinata. The surface is scorching hot and mainly composed of sulfur with deposits of copper. Its density is low enough to leave the world tidally locked to Farinata. The Alliance Defense Data Network notes that several ships have been spotted cruising near Juntama with transponders turned off, while an Alliance patrol attempted, pers attempted pursuit of one the unidentified vessel rabbited to faster than light. Its trail was lost when it obscured its light trace in the confusion of signals along with Anasi Ishtar shipping lane. Um, we haven't had any little updates about uh, the Reapers so far here, have we? Because I guess there's not really any colonies here. Tunsh Tunshagon. Tunshagon is a hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of chlorine and nitrogen in, in its atmosphere. It has an unusually small number of moons for a gas giant, a mere seven. This is likely due to the star Farinata capturing the majority of the mass during the nebula collapse that created the system. Signal confirmed. Sweet, 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 sweet. Evasion successful. Come on. Reapers eluded. Faster than light jump successful. Evasion successful. <laughs> Just give me the thing. Reapers eluded. What the hell, man? I'm dead. How far is it going to set me back? Where the hell is the second one? This is really frustrating. Signal confirmed. Oh! That's really annoying. Evasion successful. Reapers eluded. Faster 
them light jump successful. Uh. We should be all right. Alliance Frigate Agincourt. Nice. Oh no! Signal confirmed. Do one Reapers. Okay, we got the Agincourt, totally worth it. Okay, three out of five systems. Off to Caucus. Okay, maybe I shouldn't read these because the names are all ringing a bell. Faringor. Yeah, I'm not going to read. I'm just going to scan. Because I've obviously read all these, man. Jesus. I found something. Where? That's a lot of Reapers, dude. On Kohei. Mm. Credits. It's only 50% though. Evasion successful. Reapers eluded. This is <laughs> faster than light jump successful. Uh. It's got to be over here. Evasion successful. Oh, they got me. <laughs> oh, okay. Wonder why I can't find this last one, dude. Reapers eluded. All right, all right, that's enough. Just coasting. Oops. Signal confirmed. Okay, Trabin. All right. I mean, maybe you guys could tell me which systems are brand new, and I'm not gonna end up repeat reading. I know I've done a lot of repeat reading already. Okay, that, that's pretty much everywhere, right? I know this isn't 100%, we've got two things we, that we still need to get. Petra Nebula, it can't be explored. I've missed something in the Shrag Abyssal. But yeah, we're gonna, we'll be able to refuel as well when we go to the Citadel. So. I don't know if I've found what the merchant wants, but um, I'm going to go and talk to him and see. You're cleared to dock, Normandy. Oh, 
Damn it, that's yes, not what Commander. I meant. I was trying to skip. Doesn't make too much difference. Yeah, we need to check if people have relocated though, right? Uh, Ashley's not there anymore. Or she's just not available. Uh, Steve hasn't gone to the, the the club either, so... Welcome, Commander Shepard. Right, let's run to the opposite end of the Presidium Commons. I'm going to check out this film as well. Now arriving at Presidium Commons. To end it with him. Things weren't great even before he deployed, and if I pretend to be happy. Yeah, this is uh, that's a repeat one. So apparently, this this uh, hilarious film is up here. Blasto Six. It's about a Hanar, right, and an Elcor. Oh, he's a Volus. Bottom line, you can't touch the Vorcha. They've got diplomatic immunity. And this one will not attempt diplomacy. You're also getting a new partner. Are you engaging in reproductive behavior with this one? <laughs> Okay, sorry if you can't hear that very well. I've got uh, like I've got uh, the voice at maximum volume. I mean, it's not like uh, I've got it lowered. Annoyed. For me. Everything he says. Greetings, Watcher Citizen. Please explain the reason for your haste. Ah, you no touch me. Diplomatic give me a <laughs> Please exercise caution, criminal scum. Your face may cause damage to my partner's vehicle. Badass police. Hey, you're hurting him. His unique genetic structure will enable him to regenerate. Unless this one uses fire. I mean, I said I wanted more Elcor 
and Hanar stuff, right? But I don't know if this is what I meant. Frogan defecation, really? Oh no! How would this work? Yes. Who doesn't respect me? Stand up for yourself. This one mainly respects you, but you care more about protocol than stopping the Borgia. Badass boy. Doing it by the book is what separates us from them. <laughs> Kill you now. Spawn of questionable parentage. The Borgia. Get to cover. Spawn of questionable parentage. <laughs> This isn't going to make a very good thumbnail. I need a different one. I've been struggling on the thumbnail front, guys. Oh no! Bobbin! It could be based on Sylvester Stallone, right? It sounds like Sylvester Stallone, right? But with a bit more range. <laughs> It was 
obvious she helped your men plan the ambush. You no kill me. Diplomatic immunity. Yes. This one made a promise to do it by the book. You may only be killed in self-defense. Ah, you no see my gun. Ah. You are standing on flammable material. This one has no choice. What are you going to do about the sister? Is this repeat now? Yeah. Don't judge me, it was a good film. That was hilarious, man. That's based on whatever that Clint Eastwood thing is, right? I know the Simpsons spoofed it as well with MacGyver, right? That was great. Right now, Badass for me. Yeah. Disgusting would be the tax rates for doing business on Thessia. The Alliance military has abandoned the Alliance council to the incoming If I wanted to get screwed by the Asari, <laughs> I would have returned to Thessia's calls. He's got an answer for everything. Are you insane? We're hardly getting enough sleep as it is. I'm not going to sleep. I might as well at least make myself useful, right? That... Damn, I'm tired. If that argument makes sense. Yeah, should volunteer too. Talk to the other. Yeah. 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 You're back, huh? Any luck out there? Here, I've got some pieces oh, for you. I don't know what it Dundee is, but here you go. Check in with General Oraka. You'll see I'm making CSEC very happy. Oh, beautiful. I don't know what we gave him. Terminus fleet, sure. Welcome to the Citadel gift shop. All proceeds from today's purchases go to the Turian War effort. Oh, that's a lovely idea. I really appreciate management doing it. I have noticed many displays of public affection on the Citadel. The rate seems disproportionately high. Everybody could die tomorrow. Oh, I didn't skip that. I wonder if this is how the Krogan feel. What? I have spoken with many Batarian refugees here, Shepard. It may interest you to know that they are much more agreeable when the hegemony is no longer watching. Hegemony, hegemony. Excuse me, Shepard. I'm looking through files and videos of human behavior. I have 1.24 million windows open, but your request <laughs> is important to me. Please hold. Sounds like my Chrome browser. Is it time to return to the Normandy? 
I'm getting propositioned with increasing frequency. Yes. Is it time to return to the... Welcome to Casa Fabrication Weaponry. Casa I'm wondering... Fabrication Weaponry I'm hasn't forgotten Earth. Neither should you. I'm wondering if uh, some of these other things we can, we can buy in shops, but I'm not sure. Commander Shepard, I was just contacted by a black market dealer who's donating high-end weapons to CSEC. Yep, yep, yep. He wanted you to know. Sounds like you came through. And the Blue Suns can go about their business. Now we'll be focusing on Citadel defense. It won't bring Palavan back, but it's something. Thank you, Commander. The Alliance military has abandoned the Hades Gamma Cluster to incoming Reaper forces. Okay. I know I've got codex entries. Um, yeah, like these heating units, improved power grid. I wonder if these might be Spectre requisitions. So we'll go and talk to Aria now that we've done that. We'll stop by the Spectre requisitions office. Most of these seem to be looping now, some of these ambient conversations. Did we get the thing for Barlow Vaughn? Looks like it. No, no. No, it's in, uh, it's in the Krogan DMT. We can't go there yet. Welcome, Commander Shepard. Please select a destination. One moment, please. Now arriving at Presidium Embassy. Okay, I imagine if we would have got whatever they needed, they would have shown up on the map, so I will double check that. But... Nice, nice, Ashley. Tower insiders say this was a symbolic movement to placate humans who fear Earth could be abandoned in the galactic war. A second private ceremony will soon be held for specters who will operate undercover. From across the Milky Way, this is the Alliance News Network. Okay, nothing new. And these are weapons. Oh, right, nice. Sniper rifle ultralight materials, sure. We can actually afford quite a lot of this. Um, so expensive. I need to think about what I'm going to get. Okay, let's go talk to Arya. And then I think uh, we're done pretty much. But I don't know how much more we're going to be able to do in this episode. But, um... Welcome, Commander Shepard. Please select a one moment, please. Now uh, I can do uh, the Aria. Much longer. I hear you. The white people in there keep acting like nothing's going on. No, that's just them coping with the war. Yeah, we've heard that one. No, no, no. I'm telling you, I yep. Why are guys doing that? I'm Because I'm fine with it, sorry. No, there. This one act of fun on Indium, she stuck out dressed as a commando with my VN. Hmm. Well, I'm going to look at a shotgun the same way again. No, it's because you're a woman. What the hell? That's so weird. Look who's here. The Blue Suns, Blood Pack, and Eclipse are in my pocket. I'll send them to war when you're ready for them. Is there anything on your mind? Is Darner Voss cooperating with you now? Getting General Araka off the Blue Sun's back did the trick. Voss still thinks he'll be getting me on mine, idiot. <laughs> He's committed his veteran soldiers to me. In turn, I commit them to you. What exactly have I acquired? An army that's willing to fight dirty, to do the things your respectable militaries won't do. 
Eclipse Max and Vorcha Legions are excellent candidates for vanguards in any ground offensive. Well worth the little song and dance I had you perform, I'm sure. Excellent. Whatever you say, Arya. Don't be a stranger. Okay, so um, we can do her DLC kind of at any point, I think. So I might do that after we've done this next priority mission. So let's head back to the ship. Let's return to the Normandy. And I want to have a little check in at the armory to look at the shops all at once. Yeah, the procurement interface. Because we've got all these different shops. I just want to see if they've got any cheap things that we need to give those people. Fish, fish, fish. Munitions. Yeah, I, I, I will come back and buy this stuff. It's just it's not what I'm looking for. I'm just seeing if we get any. If there's any quest related stuff here. Wait, where was that armor? Oh, we could actually afford this. The Defender Armour is a variation on the N7 Special Forces combat gear built to protect soldiers in long-running engagements where reinforcements may be sparse. When the wearer fires a weapon, the suit's computers divert energy from the main power cell to the gun's kinetic coils, offering an extra punch. The Defender's storage compartments are designed to hold spare thermal clips, while capacitors throughout the armour provide extra power to shields during critical moments in battle. The armour also comes with an injection system built into the suit and neural-linked biomonitors that adjust the wearer's breathing rate and adrenaline levels. I mean, yeah, I think we just get this, right? It's like a full suit though, right? So... More shields, more health, more damage, more ammo. 88k. We've got, a look, we've got quite a lot of money, right? Yeah, let's get it. That looks awesome though. An anti Maturian anti material rifle. Yeah. I will look through these in detail, I promise, but. I was just seeing if there was any quest related stuff in there. Okay. Okay, there's the Defender, but we can't customize it. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, I don't like it. Oh, look at the health boost. <laughs> oh, come on. I need to reload. I need to reload. Okay. That sucks. Oh no! When was the last auto save? No! <laughs> I'm such an idiot. I'll tell you what, guys, uh, I am going to reload that properly, but I'll, I'll do it after this episode. Okay, so not much happened, uh, but we've uh, got the Blue Suns. We uh, acquired a bunch more stuff, uh, scanning that last star cluster, and now we're going to move on to the priority mission next. Uh, I am going to have to reload and probably do all that quest again. But, um, <laughs> say la vie. Um, yeah.
Okay, guys, right. Um, we'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave me a thumbs up if you did. Just remember, everybody, never trust an on-crate. I'll see you next time.